Hello, I, um, I want to show you um, some tips that you might use uh, in putting your second assignment together and in presenting that work. <clears throat> Last time when you um, uh, did assignment one, there were two files that you had to load up to LearnLine and organize. And uh, the way that I suggested to do that was to put them both into a folder and to zip the folder and then upload the folder. Uh, this time, the complexity in terms of materials that you might be putting together for this assignment is, is increased somewhat uh, because you need to provide <coughs> some overview information about this unit of work. You need to provide a, another document, which is a handout to class, uh, which is a, um, a design brief that children would follow uh, to design something that you want them to do in relation to the unit of work. Uh, and uh, you'll also have examples of lesson plans, maybe, and other materials associated with those lessons uh, that will make up this unit of work. So it's a collection of material, uh, much like you might have a collection of material in a filing cabinet uh, relating to a lesson. In this case, uh, the filing cabinet is going to be the folder uh, that you put everything into and that you submit. Um, but you need a way within that folder uh, of navigating from getting from document to document so it's it's easy for you and it's easy for the reader and the the marker in this case to actually uh, look through and check the material uh, and so I want to show you a way in which you can do this now I've um, I've set up a folder for this in fact it's um, a folder that I put on to learn line for you to download and uh, we would use to have a play with I'm going to do some things with it now and um, I'd just like you to, um, uh, to have a look at what I'm doing and then maybe you can go back over the video later to get some ideas. I'm working on a Macintosh computer and there'll be some differences in the look of things uh, but essentially the process uh, is the same and um, uh, I'll try and explain those differences uh, as I go. Alright, so let me open up my store and go which is my USB stick. There you see the folders that I have on the um, uh, on the top of the stick and the one that I want to do work on is this one here which you'll notice I've appropriately named Greg Shaw ETL216 assignment 2 so I'm going to go into that folder and I already have some files here uh, the same files that I presented to you the other day uh, this one's not named very one very well so I'm just going to rename that before I go much further uh, and it's going to be now called a unit of work and then whatever the name is okay and um, <clears throat> that should be okay now I'm going to open up that, that document so I'll double click on it I'm opening it up from within that folder on the stick okay so now we have a document with some text and headings and, and so on. You can have a look through some of that information. I've also put this information on the learn line. Now this will be the main document and it'll have information in it, mostly self-contained, but there will be information that links from this document. Uh, so here I've got under documents, the main document, the overarching document containing um, bits of information and then a design brief for children and then the third point is separate lesson plans. Now um, one thing that would be really handy would be to have links to these lesson plans. So in order to be able to link we need to have some text to link from. So I'm just going to put a heading in and it's called lesson plans. I'll just uh, make that a, uh, a proper heading if I can find it uh, it's okay we we'll use a different way of doing this so I've just made it a heading using a style and I'll put a lesson one oops and I don't want that to be at a heading level one, so I change that back again. So there we have a piece of text which is something that I can hyperlink to. 
OK, so now let's start the hyperlinking process. So I've got some text. First thing I need to do is select that text by highlighting it using the uh, mouse to highlight text. You all should know how to highlight text. And I should leave it highlighted. OK. Now the next thing to do, there's a number of ways of doing it on Macs and PCs. One is to right click and you'll see the hyperlink word there. Another way is to use the insert menu, and in this case, scroll down. I scroll down the bottom, and I find hyperlink. <clears throat> and I think on PCs, on one of the uh, the menus, the ribbon menus at the top, uh, on one of them, you'll see a little uh, uh, icon of of the world with a chain underneath it, and that also means hyperlinking. So I'm just going to use the the right mouse click button and select hyperlink. Now when I do that, I get a dialog box. This is a different looking dialog box to the one you have on PCs, <clears throat> but basically the same information is there. Um, I can link to, uh, I can type something in the box here in terms of the text uh, that I'm going to link to. Uh, the text that's displayed is the text that I've selected, Lesson 1, so I'm not going to change that. Uh, and I can link to various things, like for example a web page, a document or an email address. Now, in this case, I want to go to a document. So I'm going to select document. Uh, on PCs, when you select a document or web page, I think it is together, you'll get a dialog box that is basically saying, OK, where is this document that you want to link to? In, in the, on the Mac, I have this select button, and if I press the select, now it takes me to a dialog box which I can navigate with to find that um, file I want to link to. Now, as the dialog box has just opened in exactly the place where I was before, that is on my stick, store and go, and I'm inside the folder uh, that I'm using as a demonstration here. Okay. Um, if it wasn't the right place, I would have to use the navigation bar to find it. However, this is really, really, really important. You must have those files that you want to link to already in the folder that you're going to upload to LearnLine. You can't link to something and then subsequently put it into a different place. The link won't work. The links are set up through a relational arrangement based on the location of the file. Okay, now lesson one, I want to link to a folder that's actually a file that's actually inside this folder. So here we've got an icon of a folder titled lesson one. If I go into the folder, just double click on it, ah, that's the file I want. Okay, called lesson plan. Okay, so I'm going to select that and now I'll click open. It's selected now the link in that link box, put the correct text in. You notice it's got some code in there that actually says where this file is located as well as the name of the file. And when I've done that, I'm going to click OK. And now, a little bit of a muck up in the layout, but now it's appeared, uh, changed colour to that typical hyperlink blue and underlined. And if I click on that uh, hyperlink, on the Mac, you just simply run your cursor over and you get that the happy little finger. Uh, and uh, on the PC, I think you need to press down Control and click at the same time to get the happy finger. So I'm going to click on that and it magically takes me to that file that I was wanting to link to. So there's the file. So now we can link two files. But what is really handy for navigation is a way of getting back. It's one thing to be able to go somewhere, but you've got to be able to return. So I'm going to build in a return mechanism. Uh, and I want to find a place to put it. I'm just scrolling down to the bottom of this file to get to some text at the bottom here. And I'll just go to the bottom of the page find a place where my cursor is. Now, um, I could use some text, which would be to go back to 
uh, to link back to the place where I came from. It's good to go back to the master, master file where you came from. But I think in this case, um, I'm going to put in some um, um, uh, objects. Now, I'll try and find out where these are. I was looking for and uh, should have realized it's under insert and it's a shape that I want. Insert a shape. But I'm just going to find the one I want. Uh, which looks like a pretty good one to use as a return uh, shape. It's a little up arrow. So I'm just going to grab this, place it into my text, close this little box, and we just stylize this a bit more. So there we've got a return, a return arrow. Okay? It's an icon. And it means go back. Now, I have to hyperlink that back to where I was going. So now, Again, I select the, the, the object. It's just a bit of clip art. So I can select it by clicking on it and you get these handles around it. Try not to adjust the, the object too much. Uh, make it look funny. All right. Again, I right click on that and I have hyperlink. All right. Now I've got to remember I'm in lesson one. Okay. Again, I want to go to a document and I need to select the document I'm going to. I'm in lesson one. I don't want to go there. I want to go back to the f next level up folder, which was this unit of work document. So I select that. That's the one I want. And now I click open and the hyperlink should be in place. It doesn't go funny color, change color like the text does, but again, if I roll my cursor over it, you'll see now you get the magic finger. Okay, let's see if that works. I click on that object. Ah, takes me back to lesson one. So now I've gone back to the file, a unit of work. If I click on the lesson one hyperlink, it takes me to the file lesson plan. Go back, go back, go back, and go backwards and forwards all day. Isn't that fun? All right, now let's think about the potential for this because in your main document, you can have hyperlinks to a number of uh, uh, files and documents, lessons. Um, one of the things that you can do if you're careful is that within, I'll just go back to my folder here, within your, your folders, subfolders, in this case my lesson plan one, I've only got the one document which is the lesson plan. But for that lesson there might be a whole range of documents that you might uh, have. It might be the design brief if it, if it applies to that lesson. You might have a class handout. You might have a, uh, some text for kids to read or some other supplementary information. So you might have a collection of materials, even PowerPoint presentations or uh, video files or any other um, material. So if you're building up a, a complex collection of stuff within the folder, um, you might want to then within the lesson plan itself, if I go back to this lesson plan, have within the lesson plan hyperlinks to particular elements in that folder. But remember to create a back button back to this lesson plan or the originating place uh, where you set up that hyperlink. All right, now, actually the idea is quite simple. Uh, the technique doesn't take a lot to learn. What it takes, though, is some planning and some thinking about your presentation and layout. I wish you well, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how people explore this and uh, can think about ways in presenting their work. Thank you.